I'm here with uh, with Brandon Gray and Peter Ruby. How's it going? Okay, good. Yep. <laughs> All right. Why don't we go go ahead and get started? With, uh, just just tell us a little bit about yourself. What you get excited about? All right. So um, obviously, as you just found out, my name is Brandon. Uh, I am uh, the owner of Peter Ruby Produce out in Plainfield, Illinois. And you know, my passion gets derived from helping people get healthy and produce. My produce is truly my passion. If you get me in a room of people and they have me start talking about fruit and vegetables, I'll probably be the most excited person in there. So. I get called a fruit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes along with it. I just play along with it because I love to talk about it. So we're, all, we're, all, we're all on the same page. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we do, we're all about produce. We do fresh, organic, conventional uh, produce, and we do organic, all natural, and gluten free grocery in the store as like an additive. So, but my passion is drive into produce. So, so, how did that start? I am fourth generation produce from both sides of the family. So, it starts with my great grandfather on my dad's side. He had a greenhouse and started the first mushroom co op in downtown Chicago. My dad took over the mushroom co op, met my mom at the market, and then they had me. And then he also did a grocery store, and now he works for a wholesaler that I buy my produce from. And then on my mom's side, my grandfather sold the restaurants. So my grandfather was a customer of my father. And so then he did the whole restaurant side of the aspect. So we have the growing aspect. We have the distribution aspect. We have the restaurant service aspect. And I'm the first retail person in the family. That's truly retail. Um, so that's, so I grew up in a grocery store being built and you know working the grocery store then working in the downtown produce markets and learning the industry from the inside and out from the growing side all the way to the retail side wow i wasn't aware of that <laughs> that's that's my little backstory <laughs> so it's funny when people ask me like how long you been how long have you been involved in produce and i say my entire life but i've really been paying attention for the last now almost 17 years they go, how old are you? I go, I'm only 26 years old. Well, why do you say 17? Well, I started paying attention when I was 10. So I've been getting brought down and developed when I was 10 years old, more, more so than the rest of my life. So go wow. from there. So, so all the other generational businesses, are those still going? I mean, uh, mushroom, mushroom grower shut down. And then we had a place called Green Mr. Green Beans, and that place uh, was bought out. Now my dad works for... Anthony Morano and Company in downtown Chicago, and they're still going. And then my grandfather, once he was done doing produce, he quit his route. And my mom used to make fruit baskets, which she sold to uh, another. She sold her list to another fruit basket company. So it's just been basically my dad in the wholesale, and then me getting into the retail side of it. Okay. So how long have you? How long has your store been there? We've been here for almost three years. Three Sorry years. for the background noise. I'm inside of Starbucks, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've been we will be uh, three years old in June twenty second. Okay. So, so in three years that you've been doing this, um, I mean, it, have you had any customers that really stand out? I mean, what, what really gets you excited about the store and the people that you serve there? I love hearing the success stories. Um, I love hearing stories of people healing. Uh, and I just love being able to pour into people. So we, I have, I remember a customer that they, when they initially came to my store, they checked out my bathrooms and they left the store and I didn't really know who they were at the time. And then all of a sudden I got a Facebook message on Peter Ruby Facebook and they said, Hey, I want to post this article on my website. Is that okay? And it's an article about how amazing my bathrooms are. And I was like, okay. So I got to know these people as the restroom rebels. And um, now I know their real names and I see them in the store weekly. And, you know, their story is um, the wife has MS and is needed to eat healthier. So they started eating it. They found my store, just driving by one day. And they decided that they need to start eating fresh produce more. And our store was really convenient for them and really close to their, their house. And so I see the husband and the son in all the time and they've lost a good amount of weight and uh, she's not doing as well as she wants to be, but you know, 
they're they're loyal and they know what path they're on. So that's a, that's an exciting thing to always see them and encourage them to keep moving forward. Nice. So nice. I have I have a, those are just, I have another customer that comes in and her son has a bunch of different issues um, that has just developed and so we just talk about what's going on in her life most of the time and you know what she's doing and what new produce she's introducing into her son's life that he hasn't had in a long time and to see how that's working out and kind of just. We got him to juicing, and we're trying we're trying to help her son through juicing, and you know, introducing little produce at a time to hopefully where he gets healthier and moves forward. So just little stories like that are what really excite me. I love that I have a customer from the beginning that I still talk to on a regular basis. Good. That become more friends than customers. Nice. So. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's a common theme when I talk to people. It's not necessarily. I mean. Yeah, you, you want to do well in business, but I think most people, you know, get excited about, you know, customers more than anything else. The business is just a way to make money, and money is the evil that we need to survive. Right. And it's really all about the people that you're there to help. Okay. So exactly. that's right. that's how I view it. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, if you, if you can help someone, I mean, my thing is, is if we can help somebody every day, um, we're doing okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything seems to fall in place after that. Yeah. You know, I just, I just rely on God to give me the direction and the path that he wants me to go in. And, you know, if he's, if I'm leading myself in the right direction, I know he'll point me to the better direction. That's exactly right. So he's in charge. He's the one that got us this far so far. <laughs> That's refreshing to hear. Uh, sometimes it's hard to follow, but you know. Just, yeah. And, it's okay. What you mean. <laughs> yeah. Try, when you're going the wrong direction, he really lets you know. <laughs> you're okay. <laughs> Oh man, that's great. Um, so you, do you guys offer like um, workshops and stuff? So we did it when we first started. The problem that we're having is we, we, so the answer to the question is yes. We're getting back into that. It takes uh, one person to pay their full attention to scheduling classes and going out and making sure we have the right people for the classes. So we're actually starting um, a nutrition series with um, the owner and trainer at Rebel Fit, um, Becky. She's gonna be coming in once a month and for the next, for the rest of the year, talking about different topics in nutrition. Nice. And uh, so that's one class we're doing. We have uh, a lady from Arbonne talking about detoxing. I think, I think she's doing detoxing next week. Um, we go out to a bunch of different uh, health fairs and whatever whatever it is that people ask us. We're going to Hometown Fitness this Saturday to do like a Produce 101 class. So we're going to just talk about the basics of produce and what produce really is and how to use it. I am not a nutritionist and I, I will preach that, that I don't know the nutritional aspect of produce, but I can tell you how to use it, where to get it from, what's the right seasons, and all that other fun stuff. All right. That's excellent. Um, so, you know, I noticed like some of the uh, the produce that you have. It seems like the names are kind of made up. Do you make up your own fruits? And vegetables? Um, no. I don't make up <laughs> names. <laughs> That's not my job. <laughs> so, what's an example? Give me an example of what you think is a made up. I, I couldn't even give you an example because I don't remember half the things. <laughs> I I like, like uh, and there's like 17 different oranges that are out there that <laughs> I've never heard of in my life. Well, what's fun? What's funny is you think of 17 different oranges, and I think of there's like 100 types of different oranges because you you're, just, you're just you're just thinking, you're just thinking of the basic type of oranges, or I'm thinking of the varieties within those types of oranges. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, your basic oranges like navels, mineolas, tangerines. Um, then you have your juicing oranges, and um, so those are like the basic four categories, five categories. Then you go into like spring navels, fall navels, fall glow, spring, like all these different names of different types of oranges from different areas of the country, and it gets really intense. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. You're good. <laughs> um, okay, so you know, you're sitting across from somebody, and you know they're saying, you know what, I, I want to take on this venture. Um, what's your advice for them? If you want to go into produce specifically, the, the grocery store specifically, you better be willing to let it own your life. And the reason why I say that is because you're up at 
anywhere between three or four o'clock in the morning to get down to the produce market to buy the produce and you get back to the store and then you have to work the store. So, and then from that point, you get home hopefully by five or six o'clock to see the family. If you try to be more of a family man, otherwise you can stay there until open to close. So you better let it control your life if you want to get into it because it's not, e it's not an easy task. And so you have to really work on trying to do somewhat of a balance, but it's really hard. So sleep deprivation is like the key to owning a produce, produce store. <laughs> but that's pretty much any business. So, um, and it's a lot of stress. So there's a lot of, as I'm sure you know, Jeff, when you own your own business, it's, there's stress of, first off, making money. Then there's the stress of giving sure, making sure you have an ROI for your investors if you have investors. And there's the stress of keeping the people you have employed employed and make sure that because now once once you own a business if, especially if you own a business where you employ people you now have those people that depend on you for their livelihood so if you're not doing your job they're not going to make it right so so what makes it worth it at the end besides the money i mean you think about it because if it owns your life you know your life it should be part of your life like it should be just like you know your, it's your life and yeah so it's not a bad thing necessarily for it to be your life, but what makes it worthwhile at the end of the day? Helping people. When someone comes in and tells me a story about how amazing their produce has been or, you know, how they've gotten healthier or, you know, just seeing people happy. Seeing people happy then come into the store and really love what they're getting into and seeing their passions. So my customers are what keep me dry, keep me going forward. Okay. And then the helping, and then helping the people around me in my team. So helping create jobs that will help someone else bless someone else. Excellent. So, so, so if someone wanted to, uh, if someone wanted to find you, where could they find you? Um, they can find me in one of a few places. They can either find me at my store. They can find me at the produce produce markets. They can find me at my house. If I'm not in one of those three locations, I'm either in transit to one of those three, or I might be dead in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if, if I were online, where would I go? And if I were driving down 59, <laughs> where would I go? <laughs> oh, you're talking about that kind of information, oh, yeah. not me personally. Oh, okay, now we're on the same page. <laughs> So if you want to find Peter Ruby Produce, <laughs> you want to go to, um, if you're traveling no no from the north, coming south, stay on 59, go right past Route 30, and on the right-hand side, past Route 30 on 59, there's a little strip mall. It's called Plainfield Plaza. We're inside that strip mall at 15412 South Route 59, Unit 106, which is right next to Tischler's Meat Market. Nice. And if you're coming from the south, you just go right past Renwick. And so if you know how to get to Plainfield Central High School, we're that strip mall right next to Plainfield Central High School. So that's the location of the store. <laughs> it may not be where you're at. Though. But it may, I may not be there. <laughs> I'm trying to trust my team to run the store more than me running the store. So that way, because that's, that's what they're there to do is to run that store. Right. That's nice. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if you're looking at... Uh, uh, ideal people that could possibly um, help you out in terms of business. Uh, you know, what are some of the companies that, you know, if you were able to make some connections, um, you know, would, would provide more value to what you're doing? What are some of the alliance type, types that you're looking for? You know, I honestly don't know the answer to that question. I think everyone's a possibility to work with. It's, my biggest thing is I don't like looking at people and saying, how can you help me? But how, instead of asking, how can we help each other? Because no partnership is good unless it's a mutual beneficial partnership. So uh, any, anyone that wants to work together, if they see a way or I see a way, it's just making sure that we're both on the same page and we both can benefit from the relationship. So whether that be just a relationship and friendship or whether that be a relationship in business, that depending on what's going on. Nice. So, I couldn't answer your question off the top of my head. Be honest with that. I was on like the Tonight Show. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it was, 
What's funny is I'm so politically incorrect that it just, <laughs> I don't really care about politics. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're, if I, if I, you know, I don't know. I don't know the answer to anyone that's in the food industry. I can work with um, technological industry that works. Around. I mean, okay. what kind of so if you were teaming up with someone else, what kind of value could you provide to them? So if I was teaming up with another business, I would my value is I'd say, hey, we do. Uh, corp, we can do some type of corporate ordering for your customer. If you're within the local vicinity, it'd be, hey, we can provide your employees with a place to buy their produce from or to buy their groceries from. We can provide a salad program. We can provide a juice program. We can provide things that help your your team and your clientele get healthier. So whether it be if you have an event and you need to have a food tray at that event or you'd like to have a food tray or like once a week you want to do something nice for your team members and you want to get a food tray delivered to your store or to your office or whatever the case is, we could we could do that. That's something that we could do. I'm, I'm sorry? you make sandwiches at the shop or is it just tricky produce? Tischler's next door does the sandwiches. So we can, if you said, hey, Brandon, I want to do like a full on like lunch type catering type situation. I would partner up with Tischler's and have them provide the sandwiches and me provide the produce aspect. And then we'd work together and come together with them. So you'd be paying two separate people, but we'd try to package it into one deal if we could. So that'd be, I haven't had that situation yet, but I'd probably talk to Rick next door and say, hey, we have a, someone that's looking for this. How can we help you? Okay, excellent. We'll go from there. All righty. All right. I appreciate the insight, Brandon. Thank you for your time. Uh, hopefully... People will get a kick out of this interview. <laughs> uh, and um, we'll talk to you soon, I guess. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for your time. I'm sorry if I didn't answer your correct your answers. Sorry if I didn't answer your questions in a way that you thought I'd answer them. <laughs> <laughs>